From the first visible light images of Venus to how super mountain ranges longer than the Himalayas may have helped life evolve on the Earth. These are some of the stories that I talk about on this episode of Scientifix. I am Mohana Basu and every week on The Prince Scientifix, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. NASA's Parker Solar Probe has taken its first visible light images of the surface of Venus from space. Venus' surface is usually shrouded from sight because its atmosphere is full of thick clouds. But in two recent flybys of the planet, the Parker probe used its wild field imager to capture the entire night side in wavelengths in the visible spectrum, the type of light that the human eye can see. The images combined into a video reveal a faint glow from the surface that shows distinctive features like continental regions, plains and plateaus. A halo of oxygen in the atmosphere can also be seen surrounding the planet. Such images of the planet, often called the Earth's twin, can help scientists learn more about the Venus surface, geology, what minerals might be present there and the planet's evolution. Given the similarities between the planets, this information can help scientists on the quest to understand why Venus became inhospitable and Earth became an oasis. Meanwhile, NASA's Perseverance Mars rover has set a new record for the longest drive completed in a single Martian day. On February 4, the rover travelled 245.76 metres on the surface. The previous record was held by NASA's Opportunity rover, which traversed 214 metres in a single day in 2015. The rover has been at the same position for several weeks after collecting rock samples from the Martian surface, which had temporarily choked a rover part. After this problem was resolved, Perseverance is doing some last-minute scouting before attempting a multi-kilometer drive to a nearby delta. Deltas are areas where water once flowed, which could help provide a rich environment for the rover's ultimate mission to collect samples that could have hosted ancient microbes. In the first, researchers from Harvard University have developed the first fully autonomous biohybrid fish from human heart cells. The artificial fish swims by recreating the muscle contractions of a pumping heart. The advance brings researchers a step closer to developing a more complex artificial muscular pump and providing a platform to study heart diseases like arrhythmia. The ultimate goal is to build an artificial heart to replace a malformed heart in a child. The device was inspired by the shape and swimming motion of a zebra fish. The biohybrid zebra fish has two layers of muscle cells, one on each side of the tail fin. When one side contracts, the other stretches. That stretch triggers an opening of a protein channel, which causes a contraction, which then triggers another stretch and so on, leading to a closed loop system that can propel the fish for more than 100 days. The researchers also engineered an autonomous pacing node like a pacemaker, which controls the frequency and rhythm of these spontaneous contractions. Together, the two layers of muscle and the autonomous pacing node enabled the generation of continuous, spontaneous and coordinated back and forth fin movements. The biohybrid fish also improves with age. Its muscle contraction amplitude, maximum swimming speed and muscle coordination all increased for the first month as the cells matured. Eventually, the biohybrid fish reached speeds and swimming efficacy similar to zebra fish in the wild. Next, the team aims to build even more complex biohybrid devices from human heart cells. Black Death, the most infamous pandemic in history which plagued Europe, West Asia and North Africa from 1347 to 1352, is estimated to have wiped out more than 50% of Europe's population. The pandemic transformed religious and political structures, precipitating major cultural and economic transformations such as the Renaissance. However, a new study by an international group led by Max Planck Institute for Science and Human History shows that the plague's mortality in Europe was not as widespread as long thought. 
Researchers analyzed pollen samples from 261 sites in 19 modern-day European countries to determine how landscapes and agricultural activities changed roughly 100 years before to 100 years after the pandemic. Their analysis supports the devastation experienced by some European regions, but also shows that the Black Death did not impact all regions equally. Now, how can fossil pollen help uncover demographic impacts of the Black Death? Human activities such as farming or clearing native plants for building can help shape the landscape. And these activities were heavily dependent on the availability of rural workers. The team analyzed 1,634 pollen samples from sites all over Europe to see which plants were growing in which quantities and thereby determine whether agricultural activities in each region continued or halted or if wild plants regrew while human pressures reduced. Their results show that the plague's mortality varied widely with some areas suffering the devastation the pandemic has become known for and others experiencing a much lighter touch. Sharp agricultural declines in Scandinavia, France, southwestern Germany, Greece and central Italy support the high mortality rates attested to the medieval sources. Meanwhile, many regions, including much of Central and Eastern Europe and parts of Western Europe, including Ireland and Iberia, show evidence for continuity or uninterrupted growth. Also this week, for the first time, scientists have found giant mountain ranges at least as high as Himalayas and stretching up to 8,000 kilometers across entire supercontinents played a crucial role in the evolution of early life on Earth. The team from the Australian National University tracked the formation of these super mountains throughout Earth's history using traces of zircon and low lutetium content, a combination of mineral and rare earth element only found in the roots of high mountains where they form under intense pressure. The study found that these super mountains only formed twice in the Earth's history. The first between 2000 to 1800 million years ago and the second between 650 to 500 million years ago. Both mountain ranges rose during periods of supercontinent formation. To give you an idea of the scale, the entire length of the Himalayas will have to be repeated three to four times to reach the length of these ancient mountain ranges. The first range is being called the Nuna Super Mountain and it coincides with the likely appearance of eukaryotes organisms that later gave rise to plants and animals. The second, known as the Transconvanan Supermountain, coincides with the appearance of the first large animals 575 million years ago and the Cambrian explosion 45 million years later when most animal groups appeared in fossil record. When the mountains eroded, they provided essential nutrients like phosphorus and iron to the oceans, supercharging biological cycles and driving evolution to greater complexity. The super mountains may have also boosted oxygen levels in the atmosphere needed for complex life to breathe. The time interval between 1800 and 800 million years ago is known as the boring billion because there was little or no advance in evolution. The slowing of evolution is attributed to the absence of super mountains during that period, reducing the supply of nutrients to the ocean. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.